Hey everyone, I'm here at Ray's Indoor Mountain Bike Park. Women's Weekend is currently going on and I have a special guest, Beatrice. Beatrice is the co-owner of the Bloom BMX. Previous to that you ran, what was it called? Magnolia BMX. Magnolia BMX for years. So Beatrice is definitely qualified to talk about the current state of women's BMX and that's where I want to take this conversation. So first of all, being that you've been involved with women's BMX for so long, do you feel like things are like a rocket ship right now taking off? Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's more and more opportunities for women to be successful commercially, which was so rare when I first started riding. The fact there's more and more signature frames, signature colorways, signature shoes and stuff. I mean, it's a good time to be in women's BMX. Um, it's definitely not easier as it was before. You definitely have to put in the work and the hours and uh, the training if you want to get up there. Um, we're seeing a weird divide right now where there's a subculture. There's like the girls who compete for the Olympic points and the girls who are just riding on the streets having fun and it's sick. It's sick to see such a different spread of women riding right now. Absolutely. Yeah. And and another thing too is that it feels like every company has a pro a lady shredder that is pro for that company yeah. and it's more and more just keep getting announced all yeah. the time it's getting a little bit easier to find a girl that matches with their image for example like oh, adidas yeah. i know adidas is looking for a female rider right now and they have one in mind but she's already hooked up so um yeah it's a good time Right. Women. Yeah, of all types, all characters. You don't have to fit in one type of like cookie cutter persona. You know, mm -hmm. you just be you. Yeah, absolutely. And then when it comes to like the riding side of things, I've said it for a while that it feels like the women's side of BMX riding wise is progressing. Who knows how many times faster than the men's side of things? Do you yeah. feel like that's? Well, I, I someone said it best. Women's BMX was kind of in that 2007 era, like mid school era. I feel that we're branching out of that right now. We're in a new chapter, as far as I'm seeing it. Especially with the Olympics coming up again, we're seeing a lot more girls holding back the clips. I mean, mm. holding back on the clips and really showing their stuff in contest. Yeah, so what does that chapter look like to you? Um, that that's seeing? the thing, we don't know. I mean, I always message Charlotte here and there. I'm like, hey, what you got? What's going on? What are you working on? Oh, I'm keeping that close to my chest. She says it all the time, so. Yeah. Yeah, we don't know. But as far as like what you're seeing that makes you feel like it's a new chapter, yeah. what do you see? Well, I just know behind the scenes there's a lot of training going on and there's a lot of new tricks being worked on. A lot of new tricks to women that we haven't seen yet, so yeah. That's pretty amazing. I mean, Charlotte's a great example in that and just the story of working on the tricks that she did before the Olympics and then unveiling these tricks at the Olympics. And I feel that that's almost what gave competitive BMX at its peak where we had the Dew Tour and X Games and all that stuff. Even more of like a, an appeal is that the X Games and the Dew Tour is where we were seeing those big high level tricks and it's cool to see that the women are like starting to do that. Yeah, and it's also nice to see um, like street, the street culture come alive too. And there's more yeah. investment. Like Francina just got picked up by Colt. That's sick. And there might be ha something happening soon with like a Colt edit too. So that would be cool to see that develop. That's awesome. Yeah. And then I feel like every week there's just some new person that yeah. nobody knew about or have seen yeah. yet that's like coming out of the woodwork. Yeah, it's hard to keep up, to be honest. Like, uh, when I started making only BMX like years ago, like, I was lucky to get one thing out a week on our website or my, on my website. And now it's like, I gotta kind of pick and choose what goes into the stories, what goes into a blog, because it's time consuming. It's a lot of work for like one person. So, right. Yeah. And then there's the fact that, I mean, you just did that quick questions with uh, Rue. Yeah. She's six. Yeah. She's six years that old. That was the most adorable interview ever. Because oh. that was her dad oh, answering. Yeah. And I think one of the questions was like, um, what are like your three guilty pleasures or something along those lines? Like, I don't know. I'm six. Like, yeah. that's just so adorable. Yeah. Yeah. There was a, there was a couple of questions in there that were just funny and cute. Yeah. But I feel like, you know, 10 years ago, be hard-pressed to even find a six-year-old who's <laughs> yeah. you know 
riding and doing yeah. crazy tricks. I mean, when I first started riding, it was like Nina and Stacy, and I didn't get to meet them until like two years into like getting into BMX. And even then, I would see them once a year, and that was it. There was no no social media, social media really. It was MySpace, I guess, but yeah. But MySpace yeah. doesn't count. Yeah. No, no, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's crazy now. Like I'm at Rays and. In this one area race, there's two girls in front of me right now, and I know there's a bunch more everywhere else. Yeah, yeah right. And then, and you have people like um, Aubrey. Yeah. Aubrey, is she Australian? No, she's, she's in the UK. Okay. Yeah, there's some the, in the UK water. The accents get me sometimes. But either way, yeah. she's doing like crazy stuff, and yeah. she's nine. She's, I think. It might be fair to say ahead of her time. Oh, for sure. Um, so I'm, I'm scared to see where she'll be at. You're scared? In, in an excited way. Okay. But like, yeah, she's her control is so good. But I think that plays in the part that her dad's a writer, and we're seeing we're in a generation right now where like people my age are having kids yeah. and teaching their kids how to ride BMX and they're picking things up a lot faster because they have an example showing them the way but also they're riding without any boundaries because for me when I started riding it was like okay there's a bunch of dudes and you already feel kind of like 10 years behind yeah so there's that barrier mental barrier at least. right 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 and and when did you feel like that barrier kind of was broken through I mean I know it still exists I mean for me personally it was very recent yeah it was through like doing stuff for Bloom or Running Bloom that I got the opportunity to travel more and I don't know it seems more possible now because I'm more connected with riders my my level yeah but for a while I just felt like super behind I mean I still do but like it feels less yeah, I get it yeah. yeah and do you feel like there was a legitimizing moment or event that happened for like both you personally with the Bloom and like the Bloom itself and women's BMX. Yeah. Uh, like for women's BMX, the Olympics. That yeah. was that was like the stamp, the stamp that like we're here. Yeah. The girls are here. Oh, for like, sure. Like I remember after Charlotte w- Charlotte won, I made a post, uh, just you know congratulating her, but also like putting out all the results. And I remember it was like a couple months before X Games was like. No, we're just gonna do a demo. We're just gonna keep doing a demo. We're like, no, no, we're we're gonna we're gonna focus on something else that actually gives us the opportunity to like make an income and actually rise up, right, in the industry. So uh, I think my quote was, um, if you don't think women's BMX belongs here, then you need to wake up or like go home. You're drunk. It was something along those lines. But yeah, that, for women's BMX, it was the Olympics. Yeah. Um, for me at least, and for the blue, really? I mean. Every opportunity that we have to work with brands is a really legitimizing opportunity, and I think we're recognized as like a trusted source to like do do good things for the community. Yeah, yeah. and from my perspective, at least, because you and I talk like a lot, I feel like the Waffle Cup and having an obstacle at the Waffle yeah. Cup for you. I mean, talking to me, yeah. it felt like that was a pretty legitimizing well, moment. Yeah, that was the first thing that came up like to my mind for sure. Um, Waffle Cup was insane and I cried afterwards because at first of all I was exhausted filming everybody I didn't even get Angie the first day because like it's it was my first time filming the event and like I was running around like my head was cut off but at the end of the day like Daryl now came up and like acknowledged how much work I was putting in Colin messaged me Colin McKay from Vance like everyone was like like you work you hustled I'm like I know I know so it was a really great moment and then having an obstacle that like was conceived from my brain and seeing it come to life and like the van team did a great job building that course as well it was it was amazing and then to see what went down yeah. on the on your it was obstacle the fa- was it like... was the favorite course it was cute and gnarly and it represents exactly what the bloom is which is like um a shared concept between angie and i like me as the foundation, that's how I see it, and Angie as like making it pretty and making it like, beautiful and making it aesthetically like pleasing. And we're just like a great team, and that's it was just such a monumental moment for me for sure and for us. Yeah. Yeah. So, obviously, we have the Olympics coming up in 24. Yeah, Paris. Is that Paris, France. What is 
2023 look like for women's BMX? Um, I think 2023 for the women who ride park, it's going to be selective riding. I think they're going to have to pick and choose what they ride and they may have to not risk going to events like women's weekend because it's too much riding in between up to an event. So we're going to be seeing a little bit of that. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what else. I feel like this is the time that maybe street is going to be more in the forefront. Yeah. I hope so. I mean, and there's, there's videos like the cliche video that came out where it was women only. I Was it street focused? Yep. Okay, yeah. so it was women only street focused video. Women filmed. It was, it was everything. Like 100%. Yeah. 100% women. I, and this maybe is a different way of looking at things, but do you feel like in 2023 and with the Olympics and everything, we're going to see more larger opportunities yeah. for women, like uh, outside of BMX? You mean like commercially? Yeah. 100%. Every year. So this is going to be the year that um, girls are going to have more opportunities commercially to do advertising. I mean, there's an ad out right now for a female BMX rider in New York City between the age of 12 and 24 to do a wheelie. To do a wheelie? To do a wheelie. Yep. Wow. Yeah. So there's going to be more of those. I mean, I remember, um, I think it was before Rio, but some pop company, soda company from like Mexico was looking for a rider, female rider. Wow. Yeah. So there's going to be more of that. That's there's going to be, you're going to see more sponsorships, um, things that don't make sense or that we're not used to in BMX. Um, so, yeah. I hope that you share the same opinion that I have about those in that. If you're watching this and you're unsure about those things or somebody says something negative about those weird outskirt things, if, if you're okay with promoting something like that, take it for everything it's worth because it's going to put you in a better position in life. Yeah. First of all, it's a short opportunity. Exactly. It's only for the Olympics, if you're lucky. Yeah. Right? Um, we saw that with Hannah. Yes. With like Got Milk. and. Uh, got Milk. Yeah, that opportunity. Like... I'm glad that she took advantage of that. And she had a huge billboard, too. How could you That's not? Sick. Didn't Dave Mira do that? Yes. So, how I mean, how could you that? not? Yeah. Yeah, no, it's all these commercial opportunities are going to be short-lived, whether it's because of the Olympics or not. Take advantage of it. Make the most of it. Um, the one thing I would like to see riders do is treat it more corporately and do more. Like, be that rising star in that office setting and not suck up to your boss, but, like, give everything you can. And... and you know, if the contract ends, at least they remember you. Maybe they'll like circle back. And your representation, how you, um, your representation of how you like treat the company as a sponsor, is only going to be a reflection on BMX as a whole. So absolutely, and and I mean, just thinking about it in terms of this is an opportunity that could set you up for who knows how long and be a stepping stone for the future. Yeah, don't do what Morgan Wade did, and uh, he did an interview with our BMX some time ago, and he was like, man, I should have taken that corporate sponsor because I would have been in a better spot. Exactly. So learn from the OGs. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you've covered women's BMX for quite a long time. Aside from that advice, what advice do you have for a younger lady shredder who's coming up and wants to make something with BMX. Um, don't force it because brands look at personality, what's genuine, um, and they respect riders who do turn down offers, to be honest. And, the, and if they want you, they'll keep chasing you for a long time. Um, yeah, just be you. Keep putting content out. It is work, unfortunately. And I hate when there are riders like talking about hey this guy or this girl is on a brand like those sellouts it's work it's work and it's everyone has to work right at least it's the kind of work that lets you do what you want to do and sometimes you don't get to do what you want to do yep you know there are writers that are on uh country teams and they're technically not allowed to like rock climb even oh you yeah know? this is more for racing i don't know if it's the same for freestyle but they want to protect their riders so yeah yeah so there you go some insight on the current state of women's BMX. Where can people find The Bloom and you on the internet? Uh, well, they can find me on Instagram, which is B-A-B-M-X. I'm sure it's somewhere. Yes. But yeah. <laughs> TheBloomBMX.com. And then our handles, same on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube Shorts, Twitter. We're just trying to infiltrate everything. So, yeah. yeah. Women's BMX is definitely in a state where it's a powder keg. 
that may have already been lit, but if it hasn't yet, when it gets lit, I mean, we've gets lit. <laughs> well, we saw what happened with BMX in general in the 2000s with Nyquist and Mira and all those names and the giant opportunities that existed. And, and I think if BMX as a whole recognizes the opportunity, great things are on its way. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. So thank you for talking to me and uh, check her out. Good stuff. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to The Bloom everywhere. Subscribe here if you haven't. We'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye.